What's up, y'all? I'm Terrence. Before we start today, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever tried to put something together without an instruction manual? Thinking about uh, going camping at some point, so I figured it'd be a good idea for me to try to put this uh, tent together. I don't know, where does this even go? Like, who uses these things? I really have no idea where it's supposed to go, what we're supposed to do with it. Anyway, I, whatever. I could not put one of these together if you paid me to do it. And so, you know what? I'm just gonna stop for now. It's nearly impossible to figure out exactly the way something is supposed to go, uh, especially without any type of instructions or guidance. Uh, we can get out all the pieces and make our most educated guesses, but in the end, what do we end up with? Exactly. Well, the truth is, recently, I started working out again. Yes, again. And so, in my basement, I've ended up creating this luxurious uh, gym experience, if you will. And so, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it, and so I ended up reaching out to this dude on Craigslist. I know, I know, Craigslist. Right. So I got a number of things from this guy, a number of equipment pieces or workout pieces. And uh, so I got them fairly cheap and I was really excited about my purchases. Then I got home and realized like I had all the pieces I think, but I didn't have any instructions at all. And so uh, think uh, elliptical, that type of equipment where you kind of work out. So I'm in my basement and I am putting this thing together. I get all the pieces out, dump everything out, and I, I don't have an instruction manual, so I'm just like, you know what? That's a nice picture. I can figure this thing out. I got enough degrees. I can do this. I can make this thing work. So I put everything out on the floor and I begin to piece it together bit by bit, only to realize I didn't have the right tools. And so that took me about an hour or two to figure out, making sure I had the right tools. And then on top of that, I was like, well, this must go here, this must go here. And before long, we had gone 12 hours for something that probably could have taken two. And that was all because I didn't have any type of instructions. And you know what? That's the worst, right? Well, you know what else sometimes gives me that same frustrated, not so sure how to do it, maybe I should just give up feeling? Yes, trying to connect with God. And sometimes when I come to church or I read my Bible or I sing during worship or even pray, it feels like nothing is really happening. <laughs> But when I look around at everyone else, it seems like they're doing it 100% right. And they're in this really cool moment, worshiping or connecting with God. You know, holy overwhelming, that reckless love song. And I'm standing there feeling like I missed out on the instruction manual. And I bet a lot of you would say you felt the same way before. Maybe you even feel that way right now. Well, you know what? That's why we're kicking off a new series today called The Beginner's Guide to Connecting with God. Because while we're maybe not all beginners at this faith stuff, sometimes trying to figure out what it looks like to really connect with God leaves us feeling a little bit like a beginner. I know I do. Sometimes we just need to go back to the beginning and remember the basics. But our hope is that by the end of these next few weeks together, we'll all feel a little more confident that we can, in fact, find a way to connect with the God who loves us even when we don't necessarily feel like it. Let's be honest. When it comes to our faith, there are a lot of times when we're just simply not feeling it. Now maybe you've been standing here at church while we're all singing and the worship music is playing and you look around and you see other students really getting into it. Oh, the overwhelming earth. Maybe you see their hands raised and their eyes closed and you think, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Because even though I like this song, I don't feel any closer to God while I'm singing it. Or maybe you've had the same feeling when you read something in the Bible, or you've read something in the Bible, or you've heard something here at church. Sure, you read it, or you've listened to it, but it didn't necessarily change the way you felt about your faith, your circumstances, or even God. Now maybe you're new to this whole following Jesus thing, and I get that. And even though you know you believe, you don't feel like much has changed in your heart. It has kind of left you wondering, what's next? Everyone told you that becoming a Christian would change your life, but right now, nothing feels at all different. Or maybe this is one of your first experiences at church, and you have no idea what to think about God. You're not even sure you want to connect with God because you're not even sure He's out there. No matter where you are in this whole faith thing, feelings like these can be difficult because they often leave us thinking that something's wrong. If everyone else is connecting with God and feeling so different, why can't we? What's wrong with us? Think about when it seems like God is showing up for people around us who are trying to connect with him. What does that say about our faith if he isn't doing the same for us? Is something wrong with our faith? Or worse, is something wrong with God? 
If you're one of those people who is struggling to connect with God, and honestly, that's me as well sometimes, then let me just assure you this right now. Nothing is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with your faith. God isn't ignoring you or not seeing you because of anything you've done or aren't doing. In fact, I wanna to show to you today that there are so many ways to connect with God. He knows that each of us is unique, and because of that, the ways we connect with him will look different from person to person or even day to day. You see, God's hope isn't that we all connect with him in the same way. His hope is that we'll simply keep trying and keep showing up. In the Bible, there's a book that was written by a guy named John Mark, though we know him today as Mark. What if, what if he preferred to be called John though? How did we get to make that decision if he's Mark or John? John, Mark? Anyway, doesn't really matter. Mark was a guy who spent time working alongside other guys in the Bible like Barnabas. Barnabas, that, yeah, that's a really cool name. Barnabas is a cool name. I might name my next person I meet Barnabas. <laughs> Not even. It's a cool name. Barnabas is a really cool name. And Paul and Peter to tell people about Jesus. Mark actually wrote a book of the Bible named, well, Mark. And in it, he recorded an encounter between Jesus and a group of religious leaders that I think can teach us a lot about what it means to connect with God. Now in the story we're going to look at today, a group of religious leaders were asking Jesus a lot of questions about faith. They were trying to trap him into saying something that he would get him in trouble. You're not gonna trap Jesus. How would you trap Jesus? It doesn't even make any sense. He's Jesus. But Jesus was, he was, he was pretty smart. He was pretty witty. And in their day, the way you followed God was by obeying a bunch of rules and laws. And if they could get Jesus to break one of their religious rules or the laws, then they could get him into big trouble. Now, after Jesus had responded to a bunch of these religious leaders' questions with great answers, an expert in the rules tried to trap Jesus. He tried to trap Jesus, right? Crazy. He wanted to know what command was the most important to follow. Jesus' answer to the man's question gives us great insight into what God looks for when we're trying to connect with him. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Look at what Jesus did here. He didn't say that worship or prayer or obeying the rules was most important at all, even though that's what the law expert probably thought he would say. Instead, Jesus pointed to the one simple thing, love. He did a little juke, Heisman. And that's a great insight into what God wants from us when we try to connect with him. The most important thing we can do when we want to connect with God is simply to love him. Love him with our hearts, love him with our souls, love him with our minds, love him with our strength. And in other words, we have to have a relationship with him. Now Jesus says that having a relationship with God is the greatest way to connect with God. But like any relationship, and some of y'all know what those are, is sometimes going to feel like there's ups and downs. Think about the relationships you have with the people who are closest to you. Maybe it's with a best friend or a sibling or some, someone in your small group. You're really close, you spend a lot of time together, and you want to be around each other all the time. And then one day, you don't. Maybe you get into a fight or you just haven't had the chance to see each other in a while and one of you develops a new interest or hobby. And just like that, it feels like the relationship has shifted. Now, does it mean you're not best friends anymore? No, not at all. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. It just means that you've gotten out of step in your relationship. And one of the best ways to get back in step with each other is to spend time with each other. And it's the same with our relationship with God. You see, spending time with God is a way to connect with God. It's a way to love him. So even when our relationship feels a little off or out of step, we can still show up to spend time with him. Because sometimes, Connecting with God is as simple as showing up. It's as simple as spending time with Him. Because spending time with God is a way to connect with God. And in those moments when you don't feel like you're connecting with God or as close to Him as you want to be, just keep going. Keep showing up. Keep trying. Keep making the effort to spend time with Him. And I promise you, yes, promise you, the more you show up to spend time with God, the more you'll eventually see your relationship grow. Now this week, I want you to do just one simple thing. Find a way to spend time with God. Now maybe for you that means making time every single day to read your Bible or pray or write some thoughts in your journal or maybe it's listening to some music or going on a walk outdoors or maybe it's even camping. If that's for you, it's for you. Maybe not for me but that might be your way. You go ahead and do that. But either way, maybe it's just a commitment to show up here again next week. Whatever it is, I want you to make spending time with God a priority in your life. No matter what you feel or you don't feel, I want you to just show up and commit to showing up, to spending time with him, to seeing where your relationship goes, because spending time with God is a way to connect with God. Now, you, after all this, after all this conversation and dialogue we've been having, you may be wondering, does that mean it's always gonna feel this amazing mountaintop experience, this, this high, this thing that we just enjoy from time to time? Nope. 
Does that mean your relationship with God is suffering when it doesn't? Nope, not at all. In those moments when you feel disconnected from God, I just want you to keep going because the best way to reconnect is to keep going. Think back to what Jesus said was the most important thing. He gave us the path we're looking for in our relationship with God, heart, soul, mind, strength, repeat, heart, soul, strength, mind, repeat, keep going, keep, 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 heart, soul, keep showing up, heart, soul, mind, strength, repeat. We're going to spend time over the next few weeks unpacking what it looks like to love and connect with God through our hearts, souls, minds, and strength. But for today, I just want you to remember this. Spending time with God is a way to connect with God. And as you head out today, I want you to think about this question. What's one way I can spend time with God?